Welcome to Cooking with Chef Sai. This episode will be focused in on portion sizes and using and cooking with spaghetti squash. So stay tuned. Below is a list of caloric needs for age and gender. Please keep this in mind while watching this video. So some of you have talked in your Google Forms that you're worried about gaining weight, the quote unquote COVID-15, gaining 15 pounds in a short span of time. So you have to ask yourself, why is this happening? Some of you have in indicated, number one, that you're eating when you're bored. There's nothing to do in your home, so you go and eat. Number two, you're eating more junk food, like cookies, chips, that, and chocolate, candy. That's your default to get through the day. And number three is something that you could have been doing even before COVID-19. And that is the main point which we'll be talking about today, which is your portion size. Not only junk food, but portion sizing when it comes to things healthy or supposedly healthy, like your breads and pastas. So let's talk about portion sizes now with junk food. So some of you may eat cookies. So let's take these Oreos, for example. So these Oreos are about 110 calories for two cookies. The problem is, is that most of us would like to eat more than two cookies. So we're talking about maybe a row of cookies in this Oreo package here. So maybe a row would be six cookies like this. So when you have six Oreos, that would be 330 calories that are just kind of empty calories, does nothing for the body. For the mind, yes, it'll make you feel better, but that's 330 calories with really no nutritional value and high in sugar. Then we go to these sun chips. So if you eat 26 chips from this sun chip bag, that's 240 calories. But again, most of us can eat maybe double of that. So 52 chips would equal 480 calories. So right there is about 710 calories in sun chips and Oreos. So, but let's look at some of our healthier foods where you could be overeating and the portions could be larger than you think. Let's take this protein bread. So this is a protein bread, which is great, 15 grams of protein, and only 110 calories per slice. So if you eat two uh, pieces of this toast at breakfast, we're looking at 220 calories, and you're getting some protein, 30 grams of protein with the two slices. The problem is, is that if you're eating this bread consistently through the day, so if you're eating a sandwich, you take that same bread, that's another 220 calories. So we're looking at 440 calories in total for both the breakfast and the lunch. What's interesting is that if we compare this bread to a bagel. So a bagel, depending on its size, could be 300 to 350 calories, and that is just for one bagel. So basically you're looking at three of these slices that would equal the bagel. And the reason why is that bagel is very dense. And because of its density, right, you're gonna be consuming more calories in that dense bagel. So if you eat two bagels a day, which some of you could do, you're looking at you know 600 to 650 calories in just bagel alone. And finally, let's look at our pasta. So this is again a healthy type of pasta and pasta is great as well as bread for energy throughout the day. But this is a macaroni and three quarters of a cup of this quinoa macaroni, which I put in this measuring cup here, right? It doesn't seem like a lot, it's dry, right? But most of us will eat more than that three quarter cup of pasta, which is 
approximately 320 calories. So some of us will easily be eating two cups, which is equivalent to 640 calories, or even three cups of pasta, which is 960 calories. Now, as we've talked about in another episode, carbohydrates are great for energy. But the problem is, again, is that portion size. Are we overeating? And that brings us to the fact that if we are overeating, that that can turn, those calories, if not used, can turn into fat. So when we look at your eating patterns through the day, you want to look at calories that are going to be beneficial for the body. So we're looking at nutrients, vitamins, good food that are going to help you keep energized throughout the day. Not empty calories where you're going to get that immediate energy and then drop off in energy because of the sugar content. So the question is, is how do we solve the overeating and portion sizing? And one of the things you can do is drink more water. The body is made mostly up of water. And that is what is happening to a lot of us is that we're not really hungry, but we're thirsty. We need to get hydrated during the day. So when I was at school, I wasn't getting enough water, so I bought this jug here, which is two liters of water or 8.5 cups of water. So this made it that I could feel that I was getting enough water during the day. And because of that, I was less hungry and I wasn't eating junk food or turning to that as well too. Number two is a healthy hack that we'll be looking at later on which is replacing that pasta. Now, pasta is great. Again, one of the best sources of carbohydrates that you can use for energy. But we're gonna look at a healthier hack. I'm gonna be introducing spaghetti squash and how to make a simple tomato sauce for a less calorie uh, type of meal. So welcome to my little friend. This is spaghetti squash. So the spaghetti squash will be replacing the pasta for this meal. So, some really interesting points about the spaghetti squash, right? Number one, if we look at the calorie value, one cup, if we look at the cup here, this is the cup, of spaghetti squash equals only 42 calories versus one cup of this pasta cooked is 221 calories. So you can do the math, right? If you eat the three cups of pasta, right, that equivalent to about 662 or 663 calories of pasta cooked. This, when cooked, is about 124, no, 126 calories cooked. So you're saving with the calories. So that's one benefit of the spaghetti squash. Number two, it aids in digestion, right? So that is a great factor as well, too. And number three, uh, it has a vitamin called manganese, which helps strengthen bones. So there are a lot of benefits to the spaghetti squash, but these are just three of them. So we'll be using the spaghetti squash and then making a simple tomato sauce after. So you have to think about what you need to actually get prepared before doing all this. So number one, I have this cookie sheet tray that will help you cook the actual spaghetti squash once it is halved. A sharp knife to actually uh, cut the spaghetti squash. So I want you to ask your parents to do this, okay? So you shouldn't do it. Your parents should have the actual spaghetti squash when ready. The cutting board to put your spaghetti squash on. The spaghetti squash itself. A can of crushed tomatoes to help you actually make the simple tomato sauce. And optionally, you can use tomato paste. This will help to actually thicken your sauce. So you don't have to use it, but I find 
and it helps thicken the sauce over the time that you'll be cooking. Stay tuned. When you cut the spaghetti squash, you want to make sure that you cut it lengthwise and not widthwise. So lengthwise meaning the longer way. Because the fact that when you actually scrape out the spaghetti squash, it will be looking more like spaghetti. So I've actually now cut the spaghetti squash into the halves and you can see what it looks like actually inside the spaghetti squash, right? You can see there's a whole bunch of seeds. So before we put this in the oven, we want to take all the seeds out. So this is what the spaghetti squash looks like after you've taken out all the seeds. It took maybe a minute to do both halves, put it on the cookie sheet. So after we put it on the cookie sheet, you do not have to add any type of salt or pepper, okay? We're basically gonna roast this spaghetti squash. So we're gonna come over to the oven. We wanna preheat the oven, baking to 350. Once it hits 350, then we will put the spaghetti squash into the oven. So see you soon. Okay, so now the oven is preheated to 350. So I'm gonna put these halves in. And that will stay in there for about 45 minutes. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna start making the tomato sauce. So I'm gonna pre or put the stove on about medium. And while that kind of warms up, I'm gonna talk about what you'll need to make the simple tomato sauce. So again, we have our crushed tomatoes here. The tomato paste uh, is optional. Like I said, it helps thicken up the sauce. I have this garlic that's already in a jar. If you have garlic at home, uh, you can use that as well too. This helps with the flavor. I think most of you will have salt and pepper. And I like to use oregano as well too. So this is totally up to you. You may have other spices that you would like to use. You can do that as well too. I will also be using this olive oil as well too uh, to help saute the garlic. So if you have canola oil, you can use that as well too. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the olive oil in the pan. Squish that around a little bit. Wait till it gets a little bit hotter maybe. Get my spoon for the garlic. So you can decide how much garlic and spice that you would like. I like a lot of garlic. Turn it up a little bit. So I'm going to wait till that kind of sizzles a bit and then add the tomato paste uh, and also the crushed tomatoes in there here that the garlic is now sizzling a little bit so maybe once it does that you want to start adding your crushed tomatoes we're going to turn it down a bit so it doesn't splash up into you now like i said the tomato uh, paste is optional I'm going to turn it up a little bit higher again. I'm going to add my pepper. Again, this is catered to your taste or your family if you're making it for your family. Some salt. And oregano. I 
Again, this is all up to you. So you can decide how spicy or not that you want it or how much salt and pepper or the actual uh, ingredients that you want to put in. So now I'm going to stir it a bit. And then let it boil. And then I'm gonna put the cover on. And then turn it down to a lower temperature. See you soon. So we're gonna lift the lid. What you need to do with your tomato sauce is keep on stirring it. You can see that it's been about maybe 20, 25 mi minutes, but you wanna keep stirring throughout uh, the actual process. Otherwise it will burn. And you wanna make sure that you turn down uh, and watch it consistently. You can't just like stay away for a long period of time, otherwise it'll burn the pan. So you wanna keep on stirring it, you know, every two or three minutes, four minutes, just to make sure that it does not burn. So it looks like our spaghetti squash is ready to take out of the oven. I have my oven mitt uh, as well too. Um, and what we had to do as well too is up the temperature a lot and put it on broil uh, just to, to speed up the process because now it's at 500. So I'm going to turn off the stove and take out the spaghetti squash. Oops, ooh. And you can see here that the spaghetti squash is uh, golden brown around the edges. And we're gonna let it sit for a bit. So don't try to spoon it out right now because it's really hot. So let it sit for so a few minutes, uh, maybe 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, and then we'll start spooning it out to show you the consistency of what it looks like um, for spaghetti. While I wait for the spaghetti squash to cool down, just a reminder that this meal is very low carb, okay? So that's a real good benefit for this meal. And then also the taste, because people always ask me about the taste, is that it has a little bit of a sweetness to it because of the squash. All right, so the spaghetti squash has cooled down enough. It's been about 15 minutes, and as I touch it, it's warm, but it isn't going to burn me. So what I want to do with the fork is I want to put it at the end of the spaghetti squash and then pull and press. And you can see here that the spaghetti squash has that kind of spaghetti consistency. So once I've finished um, emptying the spaghetti squashes, you'll be able to see the final product after it's all scooped up. Okay, so this is the finished product. I've scooped out or spooned out the half of the spaghetti squash. You can see here, right? So it's quite a bit and we still have our other squash which we'll be spooning out later. But this makes a meal depending on how hungry you are. I'm really hungry at this point. So um, now I'm going to add our tomato sauce, which you can see here is thickened enough. So it only took, you know, 30 to 45 minutes uh, to, to, you know, make that tomato sauce. Put that on there. Mm, looks pretty good. Okay, and I had some Parmesan cheese, which I grated. And now, I'm about ready to eat. You can try this at home. See you soon.